What's up everybody, my name is Joe Brown. This is the Heresy Financial Show and I got my good friend Nick with me here. We've been talking, we've been talking about what the Federal Reserve is doing, the overall economy, and uh, you've made millions of dollars for yourself, your own money over the last 15 years, just investing your own money. And then you've parlayed that now, you're teaching other people how to invest, beating the market for, for years now uh, with what you're teaching people to do. So we've been talking about that. Give us a little bit of a rundown on your uh, view of the economy right now. Are you bullish, are you bearish, and why? Yeah, we're coming out of a great bull run in stocks that really lasted for over 10 years. And um, on the back end of this pandemic, I think we're coming into a significant slowdown. I think everyone's coffers are sort of dry. They spent their stimulus money, um, and the economy is, is sort of in the tank. You know, we're technically already in a recession. We've had the two consecutive quarters of negative GDP. We've mm -hmm. seen softness in hire, hiring. A lot of tech companies have uh, announced layoffs, or at least a slowing and hiring and um, we've seen uh, housing prices come off and then housing starts and housing sales slow down significantly as interest rates have gone yeah. up which means people can't afford as much house so um, I, you know, S&P earnings are also significantly soft. The only reason really there was earnings growth in the S&P in Q2 was because of the energy sector, mm -hmm. which was, um, if you think back, you know, uh, profiting from $100 oil. Uh, oil's right. been below $100 for um, several weeks, if not a couple of months now. I think oil prices peaked, in fact, back in March. And so when the next quarterly earnings come up for the S&P, they're not going to have that, um, you know, high oil price to bank on the energy sector carrying sure. them to earnings growth. So um, housing recession, earnings recession, a tight consumer facing high inflation, pinching their um, whatever, pinching their wallet, tightening their belts, not spending as much, which of course got gains down into the economy. And, um, you know, I think that Q3 uh, GDP growth comes in, you know, closer to zero as well. And I think the malaise could last for several quarters longer, if not a year. Now, a lot of people will probably agree with that assessment, but they'll think based on the last 20 years, hey, well, if things get tough enough, Fed's gonna pivot, Fed's gonna start bailing out the market again, they're gonna lower interest rates, they're gonna start up QE again, they're gonna save everybody's 401ks. Uh, you disagree. <laughs> yeah, I'm not so sure about that, man. Um, you know, the Fed just came off their Jackson Hole meeting and, and people were saying that there was going to be a pivot there. there was right. Significant call volume uh, activity in the op options market, people betting the stocks were going to go up. And in fact, um, what happened was the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. uh, Jerome Powell said that households should prepare for more pain, that they were going to continue tightening, um, not only continue uh, increasing rates, but also, you know, quantitative tightening, whatever that is. You know, none of us really know because we've only <laughs> seen quantitative easing, right. easing for the past right. decade. Um, and on the back of that, you know, stocks completely reversed. They had been in a, uh, what I was saying and have been saying was a bear market rally since June. You, mm -hmm. know, you remember stock, the S&P went down like 15 or 17 percent to start the year. Yeah. And everybody was calling the bottom, right? Never right. since June, all the bottoms in, the bottoms in. It's always funny how there's people who are telling you the bottom was in, never told you that the top was in, but yeah. uh, maybe that's for another video. And so, um, yeah, I think that the, the Fed is going to stay its course. I'm not sure if Jerome thinks that he's uh, Paul, Paul Volcker or, or not, but I do think that he's content on trying to rein in inflation. And I'd also say that, you know, the Fed funds rate, wherever it's at, you know, two and a half percent currently after a mm -hmm. couple of raises, isn't high enough to combat the inflation that we're seeing. And so, um, you know, he can't have his cake and eat it too. He either continues raising rates to, to rein in inflation and, and, and that might work, but he's gonna kill the job market and, the, and potentially the stock market at the same time. And I yeah. think he's willing to risk that to rein in the inflation. Yeah, I agree with you. Um, and the, the hard part then is that most people say, well, what can I do? Like, do I just need to go out there and short the S&P? But you've been extremely successful for a long time in up markets, down markets. And part of that is just finding the areas that do well. So looking at the stock market right now, what are some of the areas that you're looking at and why? Well, let me back up a little bit and first say uh, the best thing you could have done was go to cash. So yeah. um, two of the things that we did in, in my monthly letter to, to get ahead of what I saw coming was sell oil stocks which mm -hmm. we've been in since uh, 2020. We sold those in, in fall of 2021. Okay. Um, and then later in 2021, we got out of the NASDAQ. So, mm. you know, I tell people in, in quarterly videos how I'm personally allocated in my IRAs with my so-called safe money, right? Yeah. And I've been in a third cash, uh, maybe 30, yeah, 33 to 35% cash for, for most of the year. And mm -hmm. That's been an incredibly smart decision. I mean, we haven't mentioned the strength of the dollar, right? If you look right. at the DXY index, um, it's up around 108, uh, has been as high as 110 or 111. 11, and that's a 20-year high in the, mm -hmm. in the strength of the dollar. You know, you hear a lot of talk about the dollar being doomed, and you might be able to argue that inflation eats into the purchasing power of that dollar. But at the same time, you know, dollars have their own bull market when most other assets are in a bear market and yeah. continues to remain the cleanest, dirty shirt in the currency basket. So uh, we've done well just by holding dollars and, and, and avoiding 
uh, the sectors that are going down. You know, the Nasdaq's corrected over 20% since since last fall, since November when it peaked. Um, yeah. It's been good just not to be in the Nasdaq. And then, you know, the other thing you do is uh, look for things that traditionally work in, in, in bear market scenarios. And the two places we've had success um, is with staples. And mm. we do that in various ways. You know, you can buy as uh, spider funds, SPDR funds that track that entire sector. Sure. Like XLP, for example, would track the consumer staples sector. Uh, but we do it a little differently. I dive into the sector and, and look for what's even going to outperform within the staples. And so we've yeah. had great luck with um, tobacco companies has been the, the primarily the primary hedge we've been using there, and then they've done phenomenal. Like Altria um, is is up since since we've been in it, and that's uh, mm-hmm. the tobacco stock we use. And then uh, the other sector that's that's performing relatively well, you know, if you look at the eleven sectors of the S and P, is utilities. Mm. Um, and so we have the same uh, sort of strategy there. You could buy the XLU, which would be the SD, uh, SDR fund for uh, utilities, but again, I, I dive into it and I select what I think is going to be the best performing of the utilities yeah. and so uh, the company we own there is Next Era Energy which mm. is one of the biggest utilities um, in the country and the largest holding in that XLU fund. Okay. So uh, those are two ways that we've been outperforming the market. The staples and the utilities which are uh, beating the pants off all the other S&P sectors as the, sure. the market remains in a bear market. I like that you mentioned the fact that a lot of people are concerned about the dollar's purchasing power being eroded because the question is eroded to buy what? Because if you're looking at the dollar versus stocks There's no purchasing power erosion there. You're gaining purchasing power, dollar versus stocks in the last six months. Maybe versus, you know, well, definitely like food and gas and, you know, things, you know, the stuff people need. But if you're looking at your investment portfolio, the cash has increased in its purchasing power a lot. Um, Next question then that I have for you is uh, real estate. Um, A lot of people, so many people are extremely bearish on residential real estate right now. What, What are your thoughts on it right now? Um, so I'll give you a sort of a split answer, a real world answer and a stock market answer. Um, it, it, it might depend on the market you're in, right? Like mm. I was talking to somebody here, we're in Spokane, I was talking to somebody who owns property in Boise, and, mm-hmm. and Boise continues to blow up. In, in Spokane, um, it's softened a little bit, but, but prices are, are hanging in there relatively well, you know? Um, you, you might have a, a year or two slowdown in, in residential real estate, but the fact of the matter is um, millennials, of which I would bet you are one, um, and, and I'm one of the oldest, uh, millennials, mm-hmm. there's 65 million of us, and mm-hmm. we're, we're just now coming of age and starting families and beginning to buy homes. Um, they're going to be a significant driving force in, in real estate over the, the coming years. The other thing is, um, you know, big funds are, are still deploying billions. Like, mm. um, you know, I was reading uh, BlackRock has a, a $15 billion fund, I think, ready to, to deploy into the sector. So, mm. um, you know, uh, they were buying, I think, you know, 30 to 50 percent of houses in the, in the, in yeah. the past year. And people like me were buying additional houses, right? right. So uh, we just bought a rental property in uh, March here in Spokane. And uh, there's people that have excess income and, and that, can, that can afford second homes and, and private companies and, and funds that are going to continue buying houses. So, yeah. um, you know, yes, you could see a softness and we are seeing a softness just because people, the rates are high and people can't afford the, the right. housing that they once, that they, that they once could. But uh, on the whole, um, I think real estate will be okay. And then the second part of the answer, I think we'd have to dive into to the market with trust, real estate investment trusts. Yeah. And there's all different kinds of those, right? Mm-hmm. You can buy trailer park REITs, you can yeah. buy medical property trust REITs, mm-hmm. you can buy IT REITs, you know, yeah. server warehouses, you can buy uh, cannabis REITs, you know, mm-hmm. IPR or whatever it is. And so um, if we're experiencing a recession or we think we're going to experience a recession, I might shy away from ones that are related to business, right? And stay sure. more in the residential side of things, which is where I like to be. So uh, we're long a residential REIT in the portfolio and, and we'll continue to be. And they also kick off pretty good yield, by the way. They do. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So if you're looking for income, that's typically a good place to be. All right. Last question. Uh, crypto. Bitcoin down around 20,000. A lot of people expected to go down to another 12. Everything else in the crypto universe is just getting slaughtered right now. What's the outlook for the next couple of years with crypto? So it's been, you know, shadowing the S&P, right? And, and, and you might have have to look to see what's going to break that bond. I mean, it's been just following the S&P lower. The correlation has been close to one to one. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, there's a halvening coming up. That might be mm-hmm. a catalyst for Bitcoin to break out. Um, and then, you know, uh, I, I, look to, I look for people to start looking back to uh, crypto as it bottoms out. So. Mm. 
um, I, I get into a little bit of technical analysis, and it seems like uh, Bitcoin wants to hold up around the eighteen or nineteen thousand dollar level. I've been a personal buyer when it dips below twenty thousand. Mm -hmm. um, even if you get a total uh, breakdown, the chart shows that it's. I think it can only go as low as fourteen thousand or fourteen fifteen thousand. It's got a lot so, of support there. Yes, and so you know. Your, the time frame is, is is always the question, right? Right. I, I'm one of the, the people who think that uh, Bitcoin, at least, has a firm place in the in the future of finance. I continue to see, um, you know, major uh, figures at banks leaving their jobs to go work at crypto startups. Mm. I continue to see crypto being adopted. Um, you know, PayPal just started offering uh, the ability to, to to use their services in in Bitcoin, and you know, I do think that you get Bitcoin in, in six figure range in the in the next three years. Let's call it. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much. And for anybody who's interested, fantastic newsletter. We've got it linked in the description below if you want to start getting some of these alerts, some of this information about different sectors that for a long time been able to use to outperform the market. So thanks again, Nick, for uh, being on here and uh, great info. And we'll talk to you again soon. Appreciate it, Joe.